I don't know. Cake Batowski? I didn't watch much of that. Oh my god, what is this? The perfect SpongeBob episode? You know what else? We're in the middle of. Is that the delivery thing? No, this is this is a video like literally saying like Hold on, let me let me put this on. The per this is what a perfect episode of SpongeBob looks like. Let me see. You know what else? We're in the middle of no! After this we'll watch the scary video. Right after this one. And you know what else else? I think the pizza is getting cold. SpongeBob is one of the most popular and in some ways most important animated shows in television history. It has been one of the best shows on television and one of the worst at times. Since then with a thousand bits. Yo, thank you for all the bits. One thing is Appreciate it. When SpongeBob is great, it's 12 to 24 minutes of animation that is borderline unrivaled in the medium. And it's been great. Facts. Lot, but its writing staff, creative team, and unfortunately its creator have changed and in some cases moved on leaving current Spongebob in a very different place than this Spongebob. So with all that variation in quality, somewhere in that sea of hundreds of episodes has to sit a gold like, standard. Like, dude, this... Chin in quality, some... Like, this, like, the way it mm -hmm. looks, like, it doesn't look like that anymore. No. Like, I remember, like, this, there was, like, this, like, darkness of some Spongebob episodes where you were almost, like, freaked out a little bit. Like, there were, like, creepy aspects. Like, what about the episode where he's, like... Um, they, he takes the bus to the wrong place. Yeah. Rock bottom. Yeah, like, that was actually, like, a weird, like, mental you know that, toll thing. Yeah, the episode where they're in the Flying Dutchman, or the, the, um, with the Flying Dutchman, and it's like, you know, and they go through the, uh, they go through, like, the perfume aisle and stuff. Yeah, that one, that one was a little scary. It yeah. was, like, a little, like... And then they, they end up, in the end, in, like, a fucking fruit salad or something, like a yeah. blender, like, that shit's nuts. Um, I don't know, dude. There were, dude, I, I just, man. Cash slinging slash. Telling you, dude. one of the first things I'm going to do when I get this house is after I get my TV and shit set up, I'm watching every episode of SpongeBob just fucked up. <laughs> like, every episode, like, from start to the end of the movie, I'm going to end on the movie. And that's it. Alone? Nah. Somewhere in that sea of hundreds of episodes has to sit Maybe a some gold alone, standard. I don't know. Turns out there's quite a few magnum opuses that have come out of Bikini Bottom. But today I want to talk about that one episode that I think best typifies the show at its best. Pizza delivery. Dude, I keep thinking about this one episode. The one with the nut. Like, I keep thinking about that one. Which one? Where he throws the nut at the, at the, at the thing that has the pearl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the and city's, like, on it's lockdown. Like free, to... It's, like, free something day or something? Isn't that something, it? Something, bro. Like, I forgot. What is that? And he, like, tries, he feeds it, and it, like, chokes, but it turns out it wasn't choking. It was, like, it had a baby or something. I think. Wasn't that it? Like, it was pregnant? Or... I think. And then, the, dude, I, I'm sorry, bro, but... It's just these memories, just bro. SpongeBob with like nine arms doing like doing like, <laughs> and you know exactly what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah, when yeah. I said that, and Patrick has like a beer belly, and he's like on the couch, like watching TV, <laughs> and they're like married, and they have like a baby, and then the walls have fucking diapers in it. Oh my god, they peel the, the wallpaper back, and it's all packed. And there's a dump truck of diapers. <laughs> <Yeah>. run. <laughs> That's it's one of the best moment. continuing Dude, gags. I'm not kidding. That shit made me, like, be scared to ever have a kid. Like, that episode. <laughs> that episode made me be like, no, I can't get anyone pregnant. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't. That literally looks like torture. Exhausted SpongeBob. JMR, thank you. Walking through the seemingly endless expanse of land, but it's how that is visually articulated that's so perfect. This moment was a product of a unique time for Spongebob. Pizza Delivery is one of the few episodes, its only season, that was fully cell animated, meaning each frame was drawn by hand, and that oh cell God. animation created a very organic, sometimes imperfect look that was incredible. See, I'm a fan of the imperfect look. I like that. Like, I don't want every- I don't want it to be a copy-paste Spongebob and they just fuck with his, like, mouth, you know, when he's talking. Yeah. Like, these early episodes, bro, this were so good. Because like nothing this, looked the same. You aren't alone. 
Whereas future seasons will shift further and further towards digital animation, Pizza Delivery Cell Animation gives the episode this amazing energy where every moment feels unique. And that's because every single frame has to be different. I guess! This chaotic visual momentum. The same energy you see in Ed, Ed and Eddie or Ren and Stimpy. If I slow a moment like this down, it's kind of incredible to see just how much- But why don't they do this anymore though? It's probably not cost effective compared to the digital stuff. And it takes how much longer too? Yeah. The digital shit? Dude, it's one guy on an iPad and he's like, he just pastes Spongebob right there and that's it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's... Detail is paid to every Fuck. single bat of your eye. Like, sure, this, so dude, I literally is. feel like a boomer talking like this, but it's like, it is facts. Like, it's indisputable how much better the older shit is. Like, it's indisputable. Yeah. Like, it just is. Um... June, thanks for the gift this up. Don't pretend that it was substantially more expensive than digital animation, but Pizza Delivery is an episode where SpongeBob's energy, the visual gags, feel kinetic, feel raw, and it's kind of beautiful to watch. But the second thing that makes for a perfect episode of SpongeBob has everything to do with these two. And you know what else else? I think the pizza's getting cold. A good portion of the very best Spongebob episodes, things like Graveyard Shift, The Magic Conch, Squid's Day Off, Idiot Box, all have one thing- Squidward's Day Off, bro! Oh <laughs> yo, my god! That episode is so fucking good, bro! Dude, that, that, that like, encompasses, like, anxiety so well. Like, the, in, like, the horrific thoughts that are going through his head, and he has to keep, like, going back and checking, like, oh my it's god. so good. Dude, holy fuck, dude, that's such a good episode, bro. ...thing in common. They utilize the show's two most interesting characters to their advantage. You finish with those errands? It's SpongeBob versus Squidward, or with Squidward. It's Sponge Squid. Pizza Delivery epitomizes Sponge Squid and everything <laughs> great about their relationship. Dude. Total Delivery epitomizes it versus Squidward. What? Watch what SpongeBob does. With Squidward. It's Sponge Squid. Pizza Delivery epitomizes Sponge Squid <laughs> and everything great about their relationship. Totally ideologically <laughs> opposed, so totally fun. true to their characters. SpongeBob is too naive to understand that Squidward finds him obnoxious, but here they're put in a unique situation. Spongebob wants to deliver the pizza to the customer at all costs, and common societal logic would dictate that Spongebob is right. That's his job. Squidward, on the other hand, would rather eat it, or... Who cares about the customer? I do! Well, I don't! Squidward! Just go home. But this episode does one better. It finds comedy in making us question which one of these two is actually smarter. Squidward forces Spongebob to drop. He objects, Squidward insists, and, well... <laughs> so Drop follows the pioneers, puts his ear to the ground, and... Drop! 16 wheels! Oh wait, he was right, here comes a truck. And that pioneer gag pays off in a big way later in the episode when Spongebob finds a rock and says he can drive it to freedom just like the pioneers, and he actually does. Drive! <laughs> As the two are lost, struggling to find home or their delivery destination, Squidward's voice of reason act slowly flies out the window, and it's when the show plants these two together and forces its two funniest characters onto level ground that I think it's at its very best, which is what we see in Pizza Delivery. And that kind of leads into the third core element of the perfect Spongebob episode. this. Dude, that's something that's, that also Spongebob episodes did really well, is they made food look so good. Yeah. I wanted a Krabby Patty. Yep. I wanted to eat a Krabby Patty. The episode where, where Squidward is getting fat, my mouth was <laughs> salivating. Yeah, no, they look delicious. But it's like, imagine what that shit was. Like, <laughs> like what was it? <laughs> Dude, what was it? I, there's an episode it's where It's gotta they, be, I mean... Yeah, but they show them, like, they show them assembling the, 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 the burger, and it's, like, a beef patty, but, like, it's under, it's underwater. It's, like, such a funny, fucked up, like, gag. Any show that runs as long as Spongebob has is going to hit walls with its writing and animation. C.H. Greenblatt came in and introduced the gross-up that helped revolutionize how we saw the show's characters. The film and Steven Hillenburg's return helped resurrect the writing, but the reality is that the show was at its best when it was hard to predict. When the gags and humor were novel, so well written that it prevented its characters from becoming flanderized. 
Yeah, we a term referring about to a character who's enveloped by and slowly transitioned into being exclusively one piece of their personality all the time. I have a whole video about it here. Pizza delivery nails that. Sure, SpongeBob is naive, emotional, and high energy, but this iconic kitsch I can gag follows a previous moment of SpongeBob actually showing some intellect. And yes, the Krusty Krab Pizza song, particularly this moment, is incredibly funny, but it's funny because Squidward is begrudgingly letting it happen. Even this guy here with the bow. It's expected that Spongebob is going to screw this up. We know he can't drive, but instead of taking the easy route with the writing and having him excitedly jump at the opportunity to drive, hop into the boat and peel off into absolute mayhem, he actually protests driving at all, tells Squidward no. I can't, I'm still in boating school. Come on, Spongebob, it's just around the corner. It's Squidward that pressures him into and creates this moment. And Pizza Delivery Spongebob isn't brainless, he's just committed to his job to a hilarious degree, to the point that he'd rather starve than fail. Squidward in Pizza Delivery is angry and a little mean, but he's also empathetic. He isn't a total bully, so every moment of humor kind of feels grounded. You Dude, get it. Future it doesn't need to shove the humor down as hell. Here. Yeah, I know. But do you hear what he said, though? He's like... The, like he like Squidward's not coming off as a bully. Like the things yeah. he's saying are like actually funny. But now you watch the SpongeBob episode, it's like Patrick's like, I need two burgers, one for my belly. Like <laughs> like it just like just so just like it's sad, bro. No, they're really dumbed down and they're really like single faceted characters. They're not like these, Yeah. These characters all have multiple different traits. These are complex like characters dealing with actual emotion. Like when when SpongeBob is scared to go outside. Like you understand kind of, but you but you know like oh that's like he's going through something right now like yeah. type shit like it's not like dude now SpongeBob dealing with some shit like that like it wouldn't be it wouldn't even I don't know I don't know what I'm saying to be honest and it's the only no, I know exactly the final element of a perfect SpongeBob episode works. watch part guys How am I supposed to eat this if we do a watch party half the people in the chat are gonna say L and make the chat toxic I, we already calmed the chat down for being toxic like. Dude, you know what's gonna happen, bro. Dude's gonna be sitting here, oh, fuck you, L. It's pizza without my drink! Didn't you ever once think of the straight. customer? Crazy, you call yourself Clutch, a thank you, bro. boy? Well, I ain't buying! SpongeBob's an interesting show, in that it's almost entirely humor-based. There's no nuanced narrative, there's no hero or villain most of the time, it isn't about teaching life lessons, and it isn't serialized. It, unlike things like the aforementioned Ed and Nettie, also doesn't follow a formula episode to episode. So it can be hard to write a really good resolution. What's the formula of Ed and Nettie? Like, they're like, oh, I want to, let's build this thing or something. They I like, like jawbreakers. They want jawbreakers a lot. So they're, a lot of the antics are around getting jawbreakers. And there's a whole bunch of kids in the neighborhood and they do a bunch of crazy antics. But I think they, they're trying to get a lot of money-making schemes, so, like, get-rich-quick schemes. I'm pretty sure... Isn't it, like... Oh yeah, they're, they're just trying to make money. Yeah, they're trying to make money for jawbreakers. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So, literally, all they want is just money to buy jawbreakers. Yeah. And then when they actually got a jawbreaker, I mean, they, they were happy as fuck. Yeah. And, like, they actually made jawbreakers look good as hell in that, too. I they mean, did. But they, like, filled up the, the whole... Che yeah. to that kind of very loose structure. Pizza Delivery has one of the best endings of any episode of Spongebob, period. It's hilarious, but it's also kind of heartwarming. After traveling all that way, Fred and Squidward defends Spongebob, Rock, right? They arrive at the house for delivery, yeah. but the guy doesn't want the pizza because he didn't get his drink. His response is brutal, totally unexpected, a complete subversion of the catharsis expected by the viewer, and he ends up slamming the door in Spongebob's face. Squidward reacts like we should. Instead of doubling down on his anger and frustration, he feels bad for Spongebob. He goes back and, well, swans on the he didn't tell Spongebob See, a lie, like that's... that he changed his mind and ate the pizza. Would Squidward do that now? Better, and they drive back to work with hilarious Squidward sleep. would laugh. Yeah. He would, and it would be like sad. He would take some kind of sadistic joy from it or something. Yeah, he'd, be the, he'd laugh at Spongebob and then, um, <laughs> like, eat the pizza and then the episode would end. Yeah. It's just a mere few feet away. It's a funny, smile-inducing ending that gives Squidward a moment to empathize with Spongebob and adds a nuance to his personality. He isn't a one-note character, and it also makes sure to end with Squidward completely defeated, as is his natural existing state. It's great writing. Sticking the landing on this episode makes a great episode a perfect one. 
And it's something all the best episodes have in common. Unexpected, but importantly, perfect endings. There are a dozen or more episodes that you could call perfect throughout the show's run, but I think it's fair to say that Pizza Delivery is one of the more iconic episodes of animation, period. It combines its product-of-the-time cell animation with the show's best characters, some of its best writing, and one of its more unique endings, and creates something that still makes its way into memes and perforates throughout popular culture all these years later. Steven Hillenburg's early work on the show, that original team, created something truly and genuinely special. Something that Nick has been chasing across their network ever since. But it takes yeah, more than a meme you to You know what it is, bro? It's actually caring about something. Like, mm -hmm. you see these things and these shows that come up and it's just like, oh, it's just some dumb shit. And it's like half-assed, the writing's horrible. I mean, I'm sure somewhere along the way, like, someone cares about it. But I bet, like, a lot of this, people don't maintain control, like, Hillenberg maintained control over Spongebob for, like, those, like, for, he loved that show, like, he, he'd written comics about it and stuff, like, years before, and then he maintained control for, like, for three seasons or whatever, and those three seasons were good as hell, because it was, like, his baby, you know? It, it's, Chad, it's kind of like, if we can compare this to, like, um, maybe, like, a rapper before he gets signed to a label like a lot of people like they'll, they'll they'll listen to this guy and they'll love all his shit and he's like he sounds different and like it's whatever but then like some like big ass label signs him for like a multi like album thing and then all of a sudden he's just making shit that you don't even it's just like is this even the guy that like I liked and to be honest um, I don't know. I mean, I've heard I've heard Jake say this about Lil Yachty, because Lil Yachty like Jake liked him since he first like showed up, and then Lil Yachty like got signed to some shit. And now he's like doesn't make as good songs apparently, but that never happened with Drake. Guys, stop with the Drake hate. It doesn't even make sense. No one can tell Drake what to do. Like, literally, there are labels that can tell artists what they can and can't do. Drake is does whatever he wants. What are you talking about? I'm not saying Lil Yachty, ha like, doesn't do what he wants, but but that's what I was told from Jake, and I like, he follows Lil Yachty like that, so, you know, I don't know. That happened to Cardi? Specific. specific you're oh my god dude I'm, I'm done i'm not getting baited by specifics comments anymore the iconic it's a perfect storm it's the context that surrounds the moment that makes it stick it's the perfect episode and this well there's a very good reason we remember this Like, that kind of creativity, that kind of creativity to just do that, that does not exist. 